It was twilight at Epping when I met Kiri for the first time. Kiri means milk in Sinhalese. It's the first word that came to my mouth when I began to stroke him. He seems to be a free roaming cat, scavenging in the backyards of industrial Melbourne with few other cats. But now he has begun to follow me. He's too friendly to be feral, perhaps lost or abandoned. Soon he started to walk in front of me. His remains of a tail held high like a flagpole. According to body language of cats, that means he's happy. He wanted to be seen. But this tail tells a very sad tale. There was neither flesh nor fur to cover up this exposed bone. And it strikes a very sad chord when he comes through the bars of the iron gate, wagging this extension of his spinal cord. He kept on headbutting me, inviting me to play with him. He wanted to show off what he knew about the night. He showed me that he was not the only cat to roam the night. He stood the ground in between me and the other cats. He playfully bullied the possums. And he stalked a fox under the urban streetlights. He remained with me throughout the night until I finished my shift at dawn. I was lucky to see him again on the next night. He was already waiting for me. He knew I would bring him to now. But unlike the usual cats, Kiri did not leave me once his tummy is full. He showed his affection to me by rolling on the ground from side to side. I felt he's expressing something more important. Obviously, it had to be about his tail. Most of the times, he kept on licking the base of this tail where it hasn't healed yet. It seems like an old wound and he did not seem to be in much pain. But it really annoyed him. I started looking for more information about this tail. It is known as tail degloving, caused by an unfortunate accident, pulling the skin off the tail like a glove coming off, exposing the muscles and the bones underneath. It's a serious condition that requires immediate medical attention. If not, it would be fatal for the cat. Somehow, Miraculous Rikiri has survived this traumatic stage without any treatment. But the poor cat is now left with a dead tail. It's no longer flexible due to the lack of tendons. It's also not sensitive due to the destroyed nerve endings. However, Kiri still has some control over this tail. It can be moved and rotated from where it's still attached to the body. Usually, the tail of a domestic cat has around 20 vertebrates. Kiri seems to have lost few of them from the tip of his tail. And the remaining vertebrates have all gone black and hardened like a stick. Working as a security guard at night gives me plenty of time to get bonded with the cat. While I kept an eye on the site, Kiri had been keeping two eyes on me. I always knew where he was. And if I didn't, all I have to say is... Kiri Kiri! Kiri! He would rush to me out of nowhere and greets me with a softly muted meow. The third night was my last shift at the site. Just before dawn, I told Kire that I will no longer be working here. He sat in front of the blossoming bottle brush tree and stared at me as if he understood me. Having spent the last three nights with him, from twilight till the light of dawn, I didn't have the heart to leave him behind. It doesn't matter if it's a human or a cat. I have a duty of care. I have to find a way to take him to a wait. So I'll be back. For the next few days, I went to see him every day after sunset. He only appears after twilight. He can never be found during daylight. It was always a pleasure to see each other. But embarrassingly, I failed several attempts to take him to a wait. He's a cheeky cat. If it is a stress for a cat to go to the vet, then I should get the vet to come to the cat. So I called all the mobile vets in Melbourne. There was one who would do night visits, but he refused because Kiri doesn't belong to a house. He insisted that I see a ranger. Instead, I went to the Cat Protection Society. The answer was the same, call the ranger. 
but I was concerned about Kiri's welfare. There's a war on free roaming cats due to the negative impact they have on native wildlife. Kiri has already had enough trouble. There's no way I would let him be trapped by a ranger. It would be much safer if Kiri has a house. Maybe Kiri could stay with me. He deserves nothing less but the best. I woke up in the middle of the night. Guess who is purring next to me? Kiri, the cat with the D-glove tail. A purring cat is a happy cat. A cat who is content. I brought him home few nights ago. He's no longer the unwanted stray cat. He's the new cat in the neighborhood. He's more cautious than curious and follows me everywhere like my shadow. He is remarkably transforming into an elegant cat. And his tail is showing signs of healing. He falls asleep when I stroke his head. There's a little tattoo inside his left ear. It is a common practice by the vets to leave a mark when they dissect a cat. Usually they would microchip the cat at the same time. So Kiri must be too. Now this could explain why Kiri is so friendly. So Kiri could have been owned by someone. So he's either a lost cat or a runaway cat. I'll be able to find out more when I take him to the vet. Today, I took Kiri to the nearby vet. I told them everything about Kiri. I asked them to check him and treat him for everything necessary. Back at home, I missed him badly. Thoughts about him kept me awake throughout the whole night. It is highly likely that his tail will be amputated. It would be horrible to wake up to a missing tail. I must be crazy that I feel like it's my own tail. In a short time, Kiri has become part of me. I know I shouldn't be worried. Kiri had been through much worse things. It wasn't much of a tail anyway. He will get used to it and get over it. Early in the morning, I was back at the vet. They were still closed. So I had to wait. I wondered how Kiri would look. Surely he'll be happy to see me. Perhaps he'll be annoyed with the collar around his neck. But it will stop him from seeing the missing tail. Having his old tail gone, life can only get better for Kiri hereafter. I went in as soon as they opened. But I was not prepared for what I was about to hear. I was shocked beyond words. When I was told, Kiri had been euthanized. They told me the cat was too sick and not worthy of living. His injury wasn't posing an immediate threat to his life. He was healthy and full of energy. It was no different to any other cat. They couldn't explain why they did not call me. Kiri hasn't been scanned and no attempts have been made to look for a previous owner before taking the life of an otherwise healthy cat. My request to see his body was denied. I was struggling to hold back my tears, but by then it became much harder to contain myself as I wasn't allowed to say goodbye to Kiri. I couldn't pretend to be nice for the sake of politeness. I left feeling devastated, confused, angry, I'm very sad. Should I have left him where I found him? He would be still alive then. Thank you for watching. I'd like to know what would you do? Please leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. I truly appreciate it.